Well, China was the world's largest IPO market in 2010 with a record $71 billion raised. It hasn't had an IPO since October 2012 as the securities regulators crack down on fraud and misconduct among advisors and issuers. Now, regulators announced the plan to end the freeze on November 30th of last year. And for more on the resumption of China's IPO market, we're joined by Joseph Schuster, founder of IPOX. Schuster, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Hi, how are you? So, Joseph, we've got more than 700 companies that have applied to sell shares and are waiting for approval from the, Chinese, from the China Securities Regulatory Commission. Since the securities regulator signaled last month that it will unfreeze the IPO market. So what does this mean for the equity markets? Analysts say investors are worried that a slew of listings may hurt liquidity in the markets. Do you agree with that? I agree with that. I think it can put uh, temporary pressure on the market as a whole. Um, given obviously that the environment is towards you know, mixed performance and for Shanghai a composite index overall. It was down last year. It's already down this year. Typically, strong IPO activity comes with a strong IPO market uh, and, and strong general market. And here we actually see the opposite. It's obviously kind of should be negative for the benchmarks as a whole. So given the concern of the flooding of the IPO market, how should the pace of those IPOs perhaps be controlled or regulated? Should the regulators step in here and sort of allow them in more gradually yeah I believe they do the right things they do gradual uh, issuance of IPOs over time see it, it is a big challenge if you compare in the US you have you know all these companies trading on the market now it's all an IPO process which has taken decades and decades actually in China it's all supposed to happen within a few years and that's not going to be an easy process I think the regulator does the right thing by doing kind of a piecemeal at a time. Right, well, the initial IPO freeze was in response to uh, a lot of concern about the uh, accounting and the misconduct, some questionable accounting practices. Have those issues successfully been resolved now? Is there more investor confidence in these new companies that are looking for mm -hmm. listing? There seems to be more regulatory scrutiny now towards IPOs and also investor education towards these um, deals going public. Uh, but eventually it all depends on the profile of the IPO and on the pricing of it. And the tendency or the indications are that all these companies which are now lining up are definitely much cheaper than two or three years ago. Well, one thing that's been interesting is that the IPOs of Chinese tech companies in the U.S. last year performed exceptionally well. Chinese companies that listed in the U.S. had an average day one return of 36% compared with 17% for U.S. companies that listed in the U.S. So what kind of impact will this have? Will this help the Chinese IPO market? I don't believe it will help the Asia market. It's really a very different ball game. Talk about Hong Kong, about Chinese linked deals going public in the US, or about the Chinese Asia market. It's very different dynamics, very different ball game. Okay, well, let's focus on these new dynamics and the new rules, because under the new rules, a securities regulator would only be responsible to decide whether companies fulfill the rules, the values and risks would be for investors and the market to judge. Um, that's a quote. So do the new IPO rules shift more power to the investor? Is it more like a buyer beware U.S. system? And what would the impact of that be? Well, I think uh, you're right. I mean, the scrutiny towards this IPO seems to be much larger, just like, you know, post-2004 uh, in the U.S. market. So IPOs need to be older and they are going to be scrutinized much more. And therefore, performance potentially can be much better. So in the Chinese Asia market, if you see that down the road, there may not be just a focus on capturing this initial return, this 100 or 50 percent mm. between the offering price and the first close. But there may be a more like an asset allocation kind of uh, education investment style um, uh, applied towards these companies. That's exactly what has happened in the U.S. market as well over the last one or two years. There's a very increasing uh, awareness of, of an asset allocation into these IPOs with uh, respective uh, investment vehicles such as IPOX. Well, we've got a couple of companies that are filing their subscriptions at the moment. They've yet to list. 
One of them, Niue Valve, a major industrial valve maker, aiming to raise about $300 million. What do you think the prospects are for the companies that are looking to push ahead with the listing since the suspension, the pioneers? Well, I believe um, the prospects are quite decent. I mean, the economy is still growing. I think most attractively is, is the fact that it's a, a buyer's market. So deals are all going to come at a big discount if the respective investor applies a, a diversified asset allocation approach to these companies. On average, we believe over the next four to five years, it will outperform the market, just like investors have done in the U.S. If they invested in IPOs um, since 2004, 2005, they have doubled or tripled their return versus the S&P 500. We believe that's doable in the Chinese Asia market as well. All right, we'll see how that pans out. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much, Joseph Schuster, founder of IPOX Schuster.